Number 16. Figure 25.54 shows a ray of light passing from one medium into a second and then a third. Show that theta 3 is the same as it would be if the second medium were not present. All right, provided that total internal reflection does not occur. All right, so here we have our little picture, right? Now, what I'm going to do is, uh, now, by the way, you can prove this to yourself by using some numbers, right? Pretend, if you go back to number 15, all right, pretend this is air and this is glass, crown glass, and then this is water, all right? I didn't need to calculate the theta threes, but you could have, okay? You could have. And uh, maybe what you should do is, uh, is you should test that out, all right? Check it out. Now, what um, I'm going to do here is I'm going to kind of use the logic of the problem to help us figure this out, all right? So we would, you have seen now, it's a couple of problems where we're using Snell's Law, right? Snell's Law is over here on the upper right-hand side, okay? It says that the uh, angle of refraction, excuse, uh, excuse me, the incident, uh, the index, I'm looking for the right word, it's a little early, the index of refraction of medium one multiplied by the sine of the angle of incidence for one, let's say, all right, is going to be equal to the index of refraction for medium two multiplied by the sine of the angle of refraction. Now, we always call, if we look at the picture at the top, if the light is coming from the outside here, let's say we call this the incident ray, and then the ray that happens inside of the glass would be considered the refracted ray. Basically, if you look at it in terms of this boundary, wherever the light originated from would be called the incident part, and then wherever the uh, light ray passes through then would be called the refracted uh, part, okay? Now, pretend, okay, so pretend we did the calculation. Pretend you knew, uh, let's say, index of refraction, like, you know, actually do it. You know, you can make up an angle, pretend it's 40, just like in the prior problem, all right? And you can calculate then if you wanted. Uh, you can calculate then your your uh, angle of refraction, all right? But then what you're going to do, all right, is then you're going to have to come down and now you have another boundary of articulation. So here's the key, okay? This black ray, which we just called the refracted ray, becomes uh, the new incident ray for this boundary, Okay. I'm shifting frames, right? You've seen that before, right? All the way, I mean, you've seen it plenty of times, but I'm sure, right, you might remember from kinematics. <gasps> kinematics, what? I don't remember that, right? Kinematics, remember we were talking about sometimes where the final velocity of one frame became like the initial velocity of the second frame, right? When we were might be trying to find maybe maximum height of a projectile or something or something along those lines, right? Remember all that? So it's the same idea here, okay? That the uh, ray here in black at the top, and the picture I'm circling uh, is going to be considered then the new incident ray. And now this ray would be considered the new refracted ray. Okay. So then what I'm going to do, or then what I would say is that let's call this the, you know, for the red boundary. Let's say for the red boundary, this was the incident. All right. And then this was the refracted. And then in my second case now, I'm going to write N2 sine theta 2 because that's the new incident ray, okay? And then that's, well, let me put that in blue, right? Because it's a blue boundary. And then that should then equal uh, N3 sine theta three. And this is then the refracted part, okay? Now, like I said, assume you got 40 degrees here, all right? Calculate this problem on out and get your theta three. All right, get your get your get your theta three here, okay. And see what it is when you go from air to glass and then to water, and then do it. Assume the glass isn't there. Just move the water layer up and tell me what you get. All right, it should come out to be the same. But I'm going to just show it to you with formulas here. So here's the thing: if what we said before, rewind the video if you have to. All right, if I said before that this refracted ray in the red case becomes the new incident ray. In the second case, okay, then if these two are equal to one another, well, then these two are equal to one another, right? If A equals B and B equals C, well, by gosh, by golly, A must equal C, right? 
That's the idea. So you can actually expand Snell's law if you wanted. You can write like n1 sine theta one is equal to n2 sine theta two. Oh wait, let's keep going. n3 sine theta three, right? Oh wait, let's keep going. n4, that's an m now. n4, I'm trying to confuse you. Sine theta four, right? Equal, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so look, if this is equal to this, and this is equal to this, well, like I said, by gosh, by golly, who cares? This is then equal to that, all right? And that's basically what we're, what we're showing. But if you want to calculate it out with numbers, be my guest, be my guest, be my guest. What do you think? I should have probably changed careers, right? Probably should have been a singer, right? Yeah, right. Guys, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it. Um, I hope this helps. If it didn't, um, I might understand because I didn't do a lot of calculations here. Um, but check out more of the problems. It'll make sense. Thank you for watching.